Hi guys, Michelle here today with the Baby Cubby and today we're going to be chatting a little bit about co-sleeping. Co-sleeping is kind of a hot topic here in the U.S. Um, I think often it's misunderstood by many of us. Co-sleeping is often <clears throat> thought of as bed sharing, but actually there's so many other, more options that fall under the co-sleeping umbrella. So we're going to chat a little bit about those today, some safety things that go along with co-sleeping and the new AAP guidelines that came out last year um, that actually include bed sharing as well. So stay tuned. Okay, so for co-sleeping, there's four types of co-sleeping. Bed sharing, bed extension, room sharing, and co-sleeping, like situational co-sleeping. So bed sharing is the one that most people talk about and most people think about when they hear the word co-sleeping. Um, it should be noted that here in the US, we it's kind of looked down upon, although the AAP did just come out with guidelines last year for it. And then outside of the US, it's actually more well accepted, especially in Asian countries. So just be aware that Part of it is cultural that we don't accept co-sleeping here in the US, but part of it is also safety since we have associated it with higher rates of SIDS. The next one is bed extension. So this is when you have something like the halo that's off to, the, to your bed, off to the side of your bed, or it can even be like something that attaches to the side of your bed. So basically your infant isn't in the bed with you physically, but it is somehow like attached to your bed so that it just extends it a little bit. And then there's, Room sharing, which is when you have either a portable crib like this Senna, this Nuna Senna, or even a full-size crib, depending on the size of your room, in your actual room with you. But they might be across the room rather than right next to you. So personally, like we do room, sh we do room sharing. I have a Senna Mini in my bedroom with me and my husband, and our daughter slept with us in there for about a month or two um, in her Senna Mini. And the final thing is situational co-sleeping. This is usually what you'll find with like older toddlers um, or with infants who might have a hard time at night sometimes. So situational co-sleeping means there's a crib in a separate room, so they have a nursery. And then if baby cries at night or if your toddler has a bad dream or something, mom and dad will go get them, bring them into their room, either put them in a bed extender or even co-sleep with them. So those are the four types. And we'll be chatting a little bit about general safety with each of those today, as well as um, some products that will help you stay safe while you're doing them. So I just wanna to touch on SIDS really fast and what SIDS actually means so that you know how to interpret the data that we'll be going through today. So something to be aware of with SIDS, <clears throat> no one actually knows what causes it. There hasn't been any data that's been substantiated um, with research or anything. So please note that when it comes to everything we talk about with SIDS, SIDS is only correlated with things. It's not necessarily caused by things. So we know that, and I don't know the real statistics, but we know that maybe like out of the 100 babies that were, that passed away from SIDS this year, 50 of them were bed sharing at the time. So that's how they say like something causes SIDS, but be aware that it is a correlation and not necessarily a causation. Okay, now we're just gonna go over the AAP's guidelines for safe sleeping, um, just in general. So number one, always place baby on their back. During sleep cycles, you come out of your sleep cycle a little bit after you go into your REM sleep and then you come out and your, your body kind of does like a system check. So it says, okay, am I breathing? Do I need to go to the bathroom? Am I too hot? Am I too cold? Those things. What will happen with babies though is they um, might not come out of that because they're still learning like sleep cycles and everything. And then even if they do though, and they're in a weird position, they might not have the strength to get out of that position yet. So they always say, place your baby on their back so that their neck is extended. Um, so they're not like this and we're not blocking any airways. Um, the next thing is to always place them on a firm surface. The reason for that being is that if you're sleeping on a soft surface, then your arm, your shoulders kind of roll forward a little bit and your neck might go like this. And for adults, it's not that big of a deal because we have really developed airways, all our muscles are developed. We can like adjust if we need to. Infants don't have that ability. Basically, make sure it's a firm surface that they're not gonna sink into so that they're, uh, so that they, can breathe just fine. A firm surface as well is defined by the AAP as a surface that doesn't indent when they are placed upon it. Okay, the next one is breastfeeding. So I don't want you moms out there who are formula feeding to worry too much. I formula fed my first, she was just fine. 
many moms formula feed, most of our parents were formula fed and they were just fine. But breastfeeding has been shown to have a correlation with the reduction of SIDS and incidence of it. So if you can breastfeed, even if it's just express breast milk, um, they, that is the recommendation. Among other reasons, the AAP always recommends to breastfeed for at least six months to a year, if possible. But for those of you that can't or maybe chose not to, don't worry too much, it's okay. Uh, just realize that that is a correlation, but there's other reasons too, so be aware. Okay, so the next recommendation is a new one from the AAP from their guidelines last year that they released. It is to room share for at least six months to a year. Um, the main reason for them recommending room sharing is so that in the hopes that parents won't bed share. Um, and room sharing again is either you have a full size crib or a certified for overnight sleep portable crib like the new Nacenna or the Senna Mini or even a Four Moms Breeze. Um, these products can go into your room. Basically, room sharing is that they are within sight and sound and that you'll be able to um, hear them if anything goes wrong or kind of keep track of them at night. New parents may not know this, but as regular parents, you'll find out soon that you tend to stay awake and like listen for your baby when you come out of your own REM sleep and do kind of that system check. So that's what that's what room sharing is good for um, so that you can hear and see your baby if you need to. It has been shown from AAP studies to decrease the risk of SIDS by up to 50%, which is a huge jump. So if you can room share, if you have the room, it's a great option for you. The final uh, guideline from the AAP, the main one is babies should only be brought into the parent's bed to be fed or comforted. So be aware that you still need to follow safe guidelines like having a firm sleep surface, um, and making sure that babies are within sight and sound and um, trying to breastfeed them if possible. But that that is like the main thing. Do not bring them into your bed unless they are being fed or comforted. Um, as well, the AAP says that if you know you're gonna fall asleep or you're pretty sure you will, to make sure that you, that the bed is clear of any extra bedding. So one of the big reasons that bed sharing is associated with SIDS it's because parents, number one, have pillow tops on their beds usually because we like to big, soft, comfy beds. So if you do have a removable pillow top, remove it if you can if while well, you're having your baby or make sure that you can, or make sure that there's something close enough that you can place them in there instead so you don't fall asleep. Number two, try not to use pillows while baby's in your bed because you don't want the pillow to end up on top of them um, if you're like moving around at night or your spouse. And then as well to remove any blankets and heavy bedding. So, um, if you have a big comforter or a sheet, don't sleep with it while you have baby near you so that it stays far away from baby's face. Besides that, I we would urge you as uh, to make sure that you use your best judgment. If you are, as a parent, are a heavy sleeper and you're not gonna wake up or your spouses, do not bring them in that bed with you um, because you will not be able to wake up if something does start happening to your baby. Make sure that you Put, place them in a safe spot that they are going to be safe. As well though, it should be noted that the AAP recommends having baby come in to your bed uh, to be fit or comforted rather than going to a couch or a reclining chair or something if possible. Again, if you're like not a heavy sleeper or something. Um, because what, was hap what happens is there's a higher risk of baby getting caught in between couch cushions or chair cushions um, as they slide out if you fall asleep rather than them just like laying on a soft bed um, with you next to them and having bedding removed. So again, use your best judgment as a parent, but please just keep those babies safe. Those are the guidelines from the AAP. Okay, finally, just a couple of random other um, recommendations from a the AAP are to number one, Try and use wearable blankets if you can. So often we'll swaddle babies when they're first born because it does calm them down. So we do recommend using like an Ergo Baby Swaddler one that, or like a Ollie Baby one as well. One that Velcros that won't like come undone while they're sleeping if they wiggle. So they'll just stay right there. They'll stay swaddled for you, but it will stay on them. As well, the Oilo sleepers are what they're referring to when they say a wearable blanket. So this is one that has snaps on the top, it zips down, uh, but it zips back up to keep your baby, stay on your baby and everything, but it's not gonna come off them and get twisted around them. So what we're trying to avoid is like entrapping them in any way or getting anything to cover their face. So that's why wearable blankets like the Oilo and the Ergo Swaddler are what's recommended. The next thing, make sure your crib is free of stuffed animals or heavy quilt blankets. So this is 
We all love our heavy quilts and they're so pretty for the nursery, but it is recommended to make sure they're removed when your baby is sleeping. So what I did when I was a new mom, I loved having like a quilt hanging over because it does look really pretty. But whenever my daughter would go down for a nap, I would just remove it from the side of the crib and fold it up and put it on my chair or on the ground so it wouldn't be in her way while she was sleeping and there wasn't any risk of her being entrapped. Um, again, make sure there's no stuffed animals in there so that they don't like fall over or your baby doesn't like grab onto them and cover their face with them. Um, there have been times where infants have passed away from SIDS, even just from like a light cotton swaddle on them. So use your best judgment. If you have a really wiggly baby, maybe don't use, just be extra careful. Um, as well, the AAP recommends to have a pacifier or use a pacifier if possible. Again, it's been shown to reduce the risk of SIDS. Um, so if your baby will take a pacifier, use it. It's been great. Okay, so finally what we kind of want to go over to is the Doctot. There has been a lot of um, information flying around about it, bed sharing devices. I want to note that the AAP specifically says that the CPSC does not have guidelines on bed sharing devices or bed extending devices. So <clears throat> the Doctot has lots of different um, safety guidelines, but it also does not conform to CPSC standards because there are none currently. Last, when I went and checked, the CPSC is working on creating some, um, but they currently do not have any standards for, safe, for safety. Um, so the AAP actually does not have a recommendation either way of to use them or to not use them right now. And so they say to use your best judgment. Um, with the Docatot specifically, it has been engineered to allow 12 milliliters of air through its barriers per second. That is the rate at which an infant breathes. So if your baby gets sidled up next to this bumper, they will be able to still breathe clean, pure oxygen and not like have a buildup of CO2. Uh, because of how it's been engineered. There is a lot of science in the Docatot, which is really exciting um, and which we love. It's still, you need to know to still use uh, safe sleep practices though. So make sure that you don't place it on a surface that um, is going to indent when you put your baby in the Docatot. So if the surface is indenting and the Docatot is indenting, it's not a firm enough surface for your baby to sleep on. So use your best judgment with that as well. Still use wearable blankets like the Oilo or the Ergo Baby Swaddler. And then make sure you're following all of Docatot's safety guidelines for usage as well. Um, they do say on there, it can be confusing that parents need to be alert but not awake. Again, that goes back to the fact that most parents who, after you have a baby, you will realize you are a lot more awake and aware when your baby's around when you're sleeping. Trust me, I can tell you after two kids, I do not sleep as well when they're in my bed versus when they're in their beds. So um, use your best judgment as like you as a person and how you are and um, how your spouse is and whether or not you should be utilizing an in-bed sleeper. But they are a great option, um, even just for naps, if you wanna just place it on the floor, which you know is gonna be a firm surface and uh, with a wearable blanket and that's where you would like them to sleep. So that's a great place, great option for you as well. Um, that can also be a portable bed. The reason we like the Senna so much is because it's actually really, really nice uh, for a firm sleep surface, which is a special, and a special recommendation from the AAP. So most, <laughs> most, um, portable play yards, they actually have a cardboard mattress. So like this right here is cardboard, <laughs> um, which eventually sags and gets saggy and um, isn't super supportive. I mean, if you were sleeping on cardboard, it would sag right away. The Senna and even the Four Moms Breeze as well, um, they both have plastic. So it's a plastic sleep surface, so it's never gonna sag on you and it's gonna stay firm and um, and hold its shape, which is great. Like it makes me so much more comfortable putting my baby in there rather than on something that's gonna sag over time. Um, as well, this is actually the new Nuna Senna Air. And so if you look in here, it actually the plastic is actually perforated now. Um, and then the mattress itself is perforated as well so that you make sure you get like clean air flowing through all the time so that baby is always getting fresh air. That is a big worry for lots of new parents that your baby isn't gonna be getting fresh air where they're sleeping. 
Um, so make sure that, or so this is a great option if you're worried about that, but want to room share. One other recommendation from the AAP is again, just to not use any soft bedding. So that includes crib bumpers as well. So crib bumpers, although they're nice for making sure baby doesn't get caught in, in between the spindles on your crib, uh, they can, uh, they are associated with higher rates of SIDS since baby can sidle up against them and suffocate. So be aware not to use that as well. There are more recommendations. We have linked the full list of recommendations and study and release of all our guidelines below. So feel free to go check that out. It is a lot, but it's good to know for new parents. So feel free to check that out below. Thanks so much for joining us today, learning about co-sleeping basics. Uh, just so you know, all of our sources are linked in the description below. So feel free to check those out if you wanna learn more. As well, if you enjoyed this video, remember to like it. We love to see that you're liking what we're, get, what we're producing. If you want more informational videos or how to's or product reviews, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We have all of those coming out all the time. As well, if you'd like to shop any of the products that we talked about today, we have those linked in the description too. We'll see you soon.